really was hurt by success. He just couldn't deal with this, the overwhelming oh, popularity. So, so much to be so hard. Yeah. yeah. You ready? Steve. Okay. How do you really know if something's commercial? And I know that really has to be one of your ultimate jobs. Mm. Well, you know, it's really hard to tell. I don't think you can know for sure. I think if, uh, you know, if you put Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito together, you can say, oh, that's commercial. You know, a sequel, obviously, that's going to be commercial. But other than that, I, I think it's a roll of the dice. I think basically you have to just go through gut instinct and say, you know, I really like this. This is a really good story. It should appeal to a lot of people. If I think of a television show as a producer, and I am, uh, I can get it on the air usually in nine months. Mm -hmm. With you, uh, if you come up with an idea, you really, there's no way for you to get it on the screen and out to the movie theater in less than about 18 months or two years, right? Definitely. Well, first of all, it takes um, about six, eight months to get a good script. And then you have three months preparation. You shoot for about three months. You post for about five. And then you're going to take whatever time it is to market it. So. And those times are being compressed a lot because of the money now, right? You know, you, your yeah. money, the bank is kind of ticking away and they're making people have shorter times in post-production. No, usually you get shorter times when the studio knows what date they want it released. Mm. And they'll make you work backwards and that'll cut into your post. That has to drive you crazy. <gasps> oh, it's terrible because you don't have the time to have the second thought and the third thought and to go over it again. And then you also, if, you're, if you've got, say, two years or two and a half years ahead before you do something, mm -hmm. If something's really trendy, you don't know what the current atmosphere is going to be. Like when you made this movie, we pretty much like the president, but I mean, there could be some real negative thing going on involving politics that just oh. wouldn't be the right time. When we wrote this, when Gary wrote the script, and when we first developed this, this was like four or five years ago. It was a much different country. It was, and also um, Dukakis was then running against Bush, so mm. we were in for four more years of the same kind of government and it would have played in a much different atmosphere, which is what it was intended for. It just so happens that Bill Clinton came in and now we're in the same kind of atmosphere, so it's totally coincidental. You try to make a movie that's timeless, it's gonna work regardless. And comedy, I guess, is even more perishable. You know, the certain jokes may not play as well, and then sometimes they'll be funny when they don't mean to be. Well, again, you try not to make them just so that they'll work trendy, at the time. Yeah, yeah not, try to not make them trendy so that they will last. So if you look in a video five years later, it'll still be funny. Ten years later, uh, I understand. I was reading a thing the other day talking about how you know certain things are coming back in style, and the western apparently is in the pipeline in a big way. Yes, we're going to see a lot of westerns about a year from now. Yes, you are. Almost any television show that was ever a western. Yes, there's going to be a lot of crap and a lot of good stuff out there. You're going to see Maverick. I'm going to see Maverick. What am I going to? See? You got a western out there? My husband's going to direct Maverick. Oh, okay. It's Mel Gibson. And Ma Mel is going to do Maverick. Mm -hmm. Is Jim Garner going to do it? I don't know. Is a cameo? I don't know. I don't know. That would be great, though, if you Wouldn't would. it? Yeah. But, I mean, I, I guess you just, I mean, I love Westerns, but then they went out of style, so we're assuming that they're back in. Yeah. You know why everybody loves Westerns? But what happened was there was such a glut of them. There were so many features and so much television that for years the studio said, people don't want to see them. They're, they're not going to pay to see them. Then, then, you know, they tried Silverado and a few movies, and then, of course, Unforgiven came along. And the studios and the filmmakers said, great, we can all make our westerns now. So everybody's coming forth. And why not? They're great. They're, they're, they're a wonderful form of storytelling. Yeah, because yeah, they're so, in many ways, I mean, that's what gets what, why Clint got... A lot of praises because he played anti-hero and that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. Maverick, for example, we know what he is, yeah. and he's a great character, and there's a little bit of familiarity there. So you're going in a couple of points ahead before you even start the game, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is, yeah. They are. Yeah, and plus you've got Mel Gibson, which doesn't hurt, does it? Not at all. In some kind of action, romantic right. kind of character. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's, that's one of those gimmies. Now tell me one that I know that you had to be a little disappointing to you, Radio Flyer. Yes. What do you think happened with that? I mean, is the public just didn't buy it or it didn't turn out the way you wanted it? Or what do you, after you've had time to kind of think about it a little bit? Uh, I think it was a very uh, uh, difficult subject. And I think that um, life is too hard and that people don't want to go to the movies and pay to see something that is depressing. And I think it was perceived as depressing. We tried to make it that childhood was, was a treasure and, and the tragedy that can happen to it. But I think uh, the tragedy in people's minds outweighed the treasure, and they didn't come. Yeah, that is a problem. This boy's life is one that's currently out. I think mm -hmm. it's going to have a little bit of that. Uh, you can't always make total escapism as a movie producer. I mean, but that means you're trying to make money, you're trying to figure out what people will see. Mm -hmm. Where do you 
you know, you can't always just pander to the lower common denominator because most people just don't want to be a part of that anyway, even no. though it makes a lot of money. No. Where do you draw the line there between something you would perceive as has a little message in it, but it's also fun and entertainment? I mean, how do you weigh? You, you just use common sense. You know, I mean, uh, Dave has a message in it. We have another movie coming out this summer, Free Willy, and that has a message in it about animals in captivity. And um, I think you just have to look at it yourself and think, well, would this disturb me if I went? Would this depress me? Would I stay away from this? And then you answer your questions and make your decisions. You, uh, is this tough business? Oh, are you kidding me? And what's, you know, yes. People say it's tough business. They don't relate to it because they hear so much money and they hear the movie stars and they hear a lot of the glamour and stuff. And it's long hours for one thing. That's the one, you've got to be pretty much physically in shape you to be, be in this business. People don't realize that most movie sets open at about 6 in the morning and they close at 9 or 10 at night. And then you times. look at dailies after that. And then you talk about the next day's shoot after that. So you're not home until like 12 and you're back on the set at 6. What else is crazy about the business besides physically it's just a grind? Oh, everything. I mean, you know, anything can go wrong at any minute. You have a lot of personalities and egos to deal with. You have a, a budget restraint in to try to make a movie within. You have weather to contend with. You have any number of things. Yeah, people who have given you the money, aren't they a factor at some point? Yes, <laughs> yes. Your investors? Yes, they're there. Yes, the studio is always there too. They're a presence. And you've got a lot of lawyers. This is a business that has like lawyers all over the place and accountants. Yeah, but lawyers aren't there while you're filming. Lawyers, Good. we don't need. Accountants, we do need because we have a budget and obviously we have to watch what we spend. But the attraction to you is the fact that it's not the same, it's not boring? No, because each movie is different. Every movie is different. And you don't know how to make that movie until it's all done. When it's all done, you go, oh, I know how to make that movie. And then you're on to the next one. And the next one has special effects and kids. And then the one after that has animals and it's night in action. I mean, each one is different. I think a lot of people, and this is a little selfish question here, are trying to figure out the perfect relationship if you're going to be in this business. Have you found that it's good to be working with the man that you're living with? Uh, sometimes. You know, we only work together sometimes. We've only done two movies together. Um, and as a, we joined our companies together, um, uh, and so that is a little bit easier. Because you're a captain of the ship, I bet. And I know he's a captain of the ship because I've met him before. Yeah, we both So are. sometimes you have to be dual captains of the ship, yep. or uh, yeah, sometimes we're, no, we're dual captains of the ship, and we have to just. But the steering wheel is usually on one side of the car or the other, right? Well, we both sometimes grab onto it. <laughs> <laughs> nice meeting you, Lauren. Thank you. Nice George meeting you too. Dave's going to be a big hit. Oh, thank so you. So feel good about that. Oh, thank big you. Big hit, big hit. Thank you, thank you. And don't be scared that the critics like it because that's okay. Oh, no, are you kidding me? I love it. <laughs>